The next day, Audrey brought Lara to a house a few streets away. Lara watched her as she pressed the doorbell with a single finger and then stepped back for, stepped back to wait on the porch, arms crossed in front of her. Lara was dressed in some of her new clothes, blue jeans and a green sweatshirt. These clothes fit her better than the ones she'd arrived in, but those had been made in Equestria. They might not have been even intended for a human originally. These felt perfect. I haven't seen Nathan in weeks, Roger said. This is the perfect excuse for me, uh, perfect excuse to come by and bother him. From what Lyra was able to gather, this Nathan was another human. I wasn't sure why Audrey would have given the same name to that little object that she always tapped her fingers on, or occasionally hol holding up to her face and speaking to it. He's a musician? Lyra asked. Tried to be, Audrey replied. That was a few years years back. He never really got anywhere. He said he was trying to tell his old, sell his old guitar on eBay, along with a bunch of other things. But I told him you'd be interested. Lyra was about to point out that Audrey had just said that she hadn't seen Nathan in weeks, when the door opened and another human greeted them. A male with dark hair just past his ears, a black shirt that read "Aperture" across the front. Aperture science, as was typical for most humans, ma human males. He was a few inches tall, taller than either of them. He scratched his head. Uh, hello, he said as he hadn't expected them. You remember we were coming over, right? Audrey said. Uh, yeah, of course. He gave a glance towards Lyra. So you're Lyra. She put out her hand for a handshake, and he took it. She was getting good at this. I'm Nathan. You're the one who was interested in the guitar, aren't you? She nodded. Uh, come on in. I'll go get it for you. He turned and headed inside. Audrey followed him, and Lyra tagged behind her. There was a f there was music playing, growing in volume as they came into the living room. Humans seemed to love music even more than ponies did. They would play records of it practically everywhere. Stores, restaurants, sometimes even out on the streets with their carriages. Lyra tried to look at a phonograph in the room, but she still couldn't see one. It was hard to understand many of the words past the chorus. Walk this way! Talk this way! But the repeating <laughs> instrument modif motif could really get stuck in her get stuck in her head. Lara could recognize it as rock music. It was different than what she's heard in Equestria. Heavier with different instruments, but wasn't everything here different? This is what she was going to learn. It's been a while since I've since I've seen you. Uh, what have you been up to? It's been a while since I've seen you. Well, what have you been up to? Uh, nothing much, he said. Enjoying the summer, making a little money. So how'd you meet her? He nodded towards Lyra, who was busy examining a half-empty bottle of Mountain Dew on a coffee table. It's complicated. I'll tell you later, Lodger said. That's cool, he said. It's just great to finally find a buyer. Well, not exactly. More like borrowing. All right, he nods slowly. What's the deal there? Oh, um, Lyra had been watching her, how the humans interacted with interest. It caught her off guard to be addressed directly. She's pretty dead set on joining a rock band, Audrey explained, even though she's never played a guitar before. If nothing else, she definitely looks the part, Nathan said. Lyra grinned. Thanks. So you don't have... Uh, listed, it listed online, do you? Audrey said. Relax. I never even got that far, Nathan said. eBay's pretty confusing when it gets to selling big stuff like that. I was trying to figure it out, but I didn't get very far. And from the looks of things, I'd be lucky to even get 200 from the, for the guitar. Alara wished she knew more than more about the humans we're talking about. It was still fascinating just to observe them. She noticed that he had one of those big black boxes in his living room, too. Lyra thought she'd heard Audrey, Audrey's, uh, Audrey's father refer to the, theirs as a TV, whatever that stood for. The one in this house had a list of words. Resume, options, quit. Audrey had noticed it, too. Looks like you've been, been hard at work. Well, I was earlier, Nathan said. I've been selling a ton of stuff. I managed to list a few old games, some books. I've got a lot I'm going getting rid of besides the guitar. 
He turned to Lyra. So you said you were just a beginner? Oh, um, I've never really tried guitar before. I wanted to learn something new. I play the lyre, but I heard that's not very popular around here, though. A lyre? Nathan said. I guess if you found someone who played Ocar ocarina, you could start a band. Really? Lyra said, cocking her head. If she found out what that was, that could make things easier. She doesn't really get sarcasm, Audrey said. Nathan laughed and said, Anyways, I've got some beginner's guides, too. You can borrow those to help you get started. I'll get all of that for you. It's just upstairs. Thank you so much, Lyra said. No problem. Lyra, Lyra waited with Audrey in the living room, listening to the footsteps from upstairs. I wonder if he's even chosen the college yet, Audrey said, settling down on the couch. She glanced over at the television again. Those words were still there, not moving. He's never really had much motivation, though I'm not even sure what he's, he plans to study. He's still in school, too? Lyra said. Of course, Audrey replied. He'd better start looking into colleges soon. We've only got a couple years of high school left. It had been over four years since Lyra was last in a classroom. Eventually, she'd have to go back. Probably human schools were probably completely different than Canterlot. She'd never really learned the full history of and culture of her own race. Now it was making it hard to fit in. What she'd studied all her life only went up to a certain point. At least her musical talents were still just as useful here as it was in Equestria. And for now, all she had to worry about was finding some steady income. Then she could worry about other things, like school or going back to find wherever she'd been born. A few moments later, Nathan returned carrying a large black case. He unzipped it. It seemed to be made of nothing more than stiff fabric. Nothing at all in a hard, like the hard instrument case she used for her lyre. Man, I don't think I've ever even taken this thing out in years, he said. Um, can I? Larry was watching him in intently. Uh, he nodded. Go ahead. Larry took the guitar and Nathan showed her how to play the strap over, <laughs> put the strap over her head and shoulders. She moved her hands into a position that was uncom was comfortable. Right hand on the strings, left holding the neck. It's a uh, Les Paul, but don't get too excited. It's just a epiphan, epiphany. Uh, this is a, one of the cheapest ones they make, Nathan said. Um, okay, Lyra said, another inanimate object that the humans had given a name. This, like their own, interesting. Like their own, interesting. This wasn't quite like the guitars Lyra had seen in drawings, not even like the ones she'd seen ponies play a few times. Those were usually made of wood. And she ran her like, hand over the smooth black surf, black face, uh, plucked a and plucked a few strings, a few of the strings with her fingertips. They felt too loose. She found the knobs at the top of the neck and tightened them, but it still sounded too quiet. Uh, I don't think it sounds right, she said. Uh, you need to pl you need to plug it in, Nathan said. He picked up a long cord and handed over, handed her one and handed and handed her one end. He pointed it to a metal tip. This goes in the end. I'll go get the amp for you. He headed back upstairs. Lyra searched over the body of the guitar and found where the end of the cord clicked into place and, and moved across the strings. It still didn't sound right. Way too soft. She wasn't quite sure why she had assumed that, that attaching a cord would change anything, but Nathan did. Uh, Nathan had sounded like he knew what he was talking about. The guitar was missing the hollow chamber inside. She re realized, with out it, the sound just wouldn't project. It was even quieter than her lyre. He returned with a small black box, and taking the other end of the cord, he fit inside. You'll probably want to adjust these. He watched them. She watched him twist some knobs on the box. They were small, just large enough to take them in between the forefinger and thumb. The varieties of use, the varieties of uses for fingers were was really amazing. Uh, what do those do? Uh, that's the amp. It's how you adjust your sound. He pointed to each one of them in sequence. As he turned them, 
you'll want this one about five. You usually keep the treble up a bit higher. Add some reverb. Uh, she was completely lost. Uh, now try, he said. Her fingers strummed the strings, and this time she jumped at how loud it was. It's supposed to do that, she said. I could turn it down a bit for you, Nathan said. He adjusted something again on the amp. She tried a bit more and found that she actually liked the sound. It was unusual, nothing like what she'd expected from a string instrument, or any other kind of instrument, for that matter. But somehow, Lyra still found it musical. After listening to some, mo listening to some more, she realized this was a sound she had heard a lot of humans' music over the past couple of days. Blech. The physical act of playing it, though, that felt great. One hand was using the strings, which wasn't entirely unlike her lyre, but her other hand had to move along the neck, adding a whole new dimension to how this instrument was played. Both hands, each of her fingers, they all had to work independently in order to play this, but the challenge made it exciting. It felt like, felt like she was a filly again, learning to play her first songs in music class. Yeah, I've also got a tuner. It's somewhere in here. He dug around in the case. I'll show you how to use it. Lara was busy with the knobs on the top of the neck. I think I've got it. She played one string at a time, testing the sound. Uh, just by ear? Uh, that's how I've always done it. She tried a few more notes, one at a time, and nodded. Nathan scratched his head. Uh, I'd try it out for a bit, he said. I mean, I've never quite got the hang of it, but yeah. Lyra smiled. She slid her left left hand along the neck, trying a few different positions and hearing what they sounded like. I think I like this, she said. Just give me a little time. I think I can figure it out. She tried a little bit more, her fingers quickly learning their way around the strings. Uh, do you mind if we step out for a while? Audrey said, gesturing towards the door. I want to talk to Nate. Wanted to talk to Nathan about something. Uh, that's fine, Lars said, start staring at her left hand as it moved along the neck of the instrument. Uh, just keep working at it, Nathan told her, and try to get used to it. She nodded, but she was lost in concentration. Audrey led Nathan out into the hallway, still listening to the sounds of Lars playing, one flat note at a time, repeated over and over until it sounded right. So, what do you think of her? She said. He stared at her. What do you mean? I guess she's kind of a, uh, kind of cute, but. Audrey shot him a look. That's not what I mean. She seems a little off, right? I wanted your opinion on that. Well, yeah, I guess she's not really what you'd call normal. You said you met her a few days ago. What's her story? What she's told me is that she just found out that she's been adopted and she's try trying to find her real parents. And she was set at sent away from home while with nothing but an old photograph of them that that she was found, found with as a child. That's a little dramatic, Nathan said. How did you get into this? She was in the park down by the state house a few days ago, playing her lyre. The hair kind of got my attention, he nodded. Yeah, I can see that. But once I actually started talking to her, it turned out she was, she could be a little strange. I could have told you that. You have no idea. From the other room, they could hear a few off-key notes and screeching feeding from the amp. They both winced simultaneously. Sounds like she's getting the hang of it, Nathan said. Anyway, you were saying? Uh, that's part of it, Audrey said. You saw how she didn't understand anything about how an electric guitar worked. She gets the way that way with a lot of electronics. It's like she's never seen them before. Maybe, yeah, maybe she's Amish, Nathan suggested. With hair like that? I don't think so. Space Amish? Get serious here. Audrey's eyes narrowed. Nathan waved a hand. Okay, start at the beginning. Well, we weren't exactly off to a great start. I started talking to her. She asked me where she could get, go to eat, so I took her to McDonald's. I thought that wouldn't be a problem, but I'm pretty sure she'd never been to one before. She didn't even know what the food was, and it turned out she was a vegan, a vegeta uh, vegetarian. Oh, Nathan said. Then he realized realization hit him. Oh! Yeah, that's that's not good. The look on her face, it was like she'd committed a murder. She probably felt like she had... Uh, she probably felt like she had, Audrey said, shaking her head. 
but while we were there, I was just kind of making a friendly conversation, and she said some other things that bothered me. Such as, well, apparently she's been living on her own since she was 12. Her and some other girl she, who she called, called her roommate, Audrey said. They might have been runaways, but Larry doesn't even realize what that it was anything out of the ordinary to live on her own at that age. You're serious. Where exactly do two preteen girls go to live and not get found by child services? Or worse, Nathan said. She won't tell me. Every time I try to find out where she came from, she just tells me the same thing. That it doesn't matter. I don't even know that her last name, Audrey paused. Well, she doesn't know her last name, or she just won't tell me. And you're letting her stay at your house, even though you know nothing about her? After everything she was saying, I started to get worried about her. She really has no idea what she's doing, Audrey said. I was able to convince my parents that she's harmless, and she's pretty much determined to make her own money, hence the whole thing with the joining a band. The sounds were gradually becoming closer to something musical. Nathan paused for a moment to listen. So, before this, she said she just played a harp. When she came up with the idea of, to try a guitar, I figured out figured she'd be able to do more, th more with that. I don't think she'll be able to actually try out for a band for a while, though. A harp's pretty interesting, though. Where did you, where did she learn to play that? And believe me, I believe me, I I'd like to know. I'm hoping that she'll open up if I give her some more time. Audrey said. Nathan leaned against the wall and folded his arms. So what has she told you? Uh, nothing I can see, really use. She claims her mother adopted m her mother adopted mother I guess was a meteorologist. Then she mentioned a few of her friends. Audrey paused and then they could hear a few notes being played. Lyra was trying to play a scale and coming fairly close. Let's see, someone named Twilight, and then there was Diane, but at first she called her Pinky, but she said that Twilight wasn't a nickname. If she was making those up, she'd have gone with something more sensible. I do think she's telling the truth when she says anything at all, but she's still avoiding telling me anything specifically about where she's coming from or why she left. At first I wondered if there was ain't going something going on, like abuse. Audrey hesitated. But she seems too cheerful. Actually, she seemed seems a little sad to have left home. Then what do you think is wrong with her? Maybe nothing. Well, not in the disorder sense. She's naive, but she can but her lack of under, understanding seems mostly cultural based. I get the feeling that she can actually be pretty smart. The only problem is that what culture she's coming from, and how she ended up in the middle of Iowa when she hardly understands how America, American society works. And you saw how she reacted just now with the guitar, how she didn't ev even expect it to sound like that. So what are you going to do with her? Nathan asked. Nathan asked. I mean, how long can she stay at your ho house? It sounds like it'll already be impossible for her to find out who her parents are supposed to be. I realize that, Roger said. I'm starting to think that all she really needs is a he a hand yeah, is a hand up. Hand up. I don't whatever. She's definitely willing to work work for what she needs. She just ne needs a place to stay for a while. So I'm doing that much for her. Can I say all I can say is that you're in a way over your head. Audrey. And not as much as Lyra is. Then they heard something. A simple familiar riff. The one that they'd both heard not that long ago. Nathan and Audrey looked at each other, then head back into the room where Lyra was practicing. I think I've got it now, she said. That's Aerosmith. Nathan stared at her in disbelief as she played the riff a few more times. Lyra let the guitar hang from the straps from the strap. I heard this on as we were coming in. I thought I'd try it out. You're sure you've never played before? You're sure you've never played before? Audrey said. I've always been a fast learner. Music's my special talent. Lyra gave a shrug. That's one way of putting it. Lyra stared down at the guitar again, still trying to familiarize herself with a new instrument. She never even dreamed that something like this could be possible. The sounds were unlike anything she had ever heard. 
I'm not a musician myself, Nathan said, scratching his chin. And even if you're not exactly Joe Perry... Of course not, I'm a girl, Lara said. I still think you could probably audition for a local band if you really wanted to, Nathan finished. You're already go about as good as I was ever able to manage somehow. Uh, how did you pick pick that how did you pick that up so fast? Audrey said. I told you, music's my special talent. I've always been a fast learner. And Lyra turned to Nathan. I can really ha I can really have this? Uh not exactly, Lyra found. But I'd still like to make something off of it, Nathan said. I'm letting you borrow it for a while. I could pay pay for it. Just give me some time to make money. She liked like the instrument. It felt right. She might start playing it full time. He nodded. Sure, it's worth that much, but that's fine. It's not worth that much, but that's fine. I'll buy it from you as soon as I can afford it. I promise, Lyra said. She carefully set the guitar back in its case and zipped it back up. There was a strapped carriot on her back. I'll take this, Lyra, Audrey said, taking the amp by handle on top. Uh, I'll get those beginner guides, but I'm starting to wonder if you'll even need them, Lyra said, uh, Nathan said. You sound great. You really got a knack for it. You really mean that? Lyra could hardly believe her own ears to hear that from a human, and about their own kind of music, too. It was such an honor. As soon as we get back to your house, I want to start practicing right away. You are serious about going through with this. Going through with this, Audrey said. Of course, Lyra said. My parents always told me I should focus on my music career. Ever since I first picked up a lyre, they said I could go far with it. They probably didn't mean joining some guy's garage band, though. Lara smiled. Probably not. She always, she wasn't about to tell either of them, but her parents hadn't even wanted her to become human in the first place, much less start playing human music. She wished that they could see her now and how that she was doing all right. Things were starting to look better already.